Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to be inking over a rough sketch. So the purpose of this is to show you that, uh, you know, you could save a lot of time and hopefully still uh, capture uh, the creativity you're looking for within your work. Uh, so I've been playing around with this for quite some time. Sometimes I'll even go direct to ink. Now, obviously, if you're working uh, with a uh, digital software, it's not nearly as bad, right? It's real easy to erase back, to re-ink, and you know you can turn the uh, eraser to any pen that you want. So you can even erase in a fashion where it you know really helps the artwork, not just soft erase, but like really sculpt your lines. So there's lots of ways to really think about this and, and edit that work, but the main thing is speed. So one of my problems that I've always faced is I, I re-sculpt things a lot. Like I, I don't always go into an illustration knowing exactly what I want. Uh, so I'll take and you know race back and redraw and redraw and redraw. And it, it can just really suck the life out of the artwork. Like you know, you're always gonna hear people say that you've got the most expressiveness and energetic feel to the rough lines. So it's knowing that about your work and allowing yourself to leave in some of those mistakes or maybe not even mistakes, but leave in some of that energy uh, so that when you go to capture it in your final rendition, uh, you, you retain some of that. Uh, not always the easiest thing to do because generally with ink, even though it's digital, you're kind of thinking in a sense of, you know, a more, um, you know, finalized line, which tends to be a little bit more tense. Uh, maybe you're trying to clean it up too much. So uh, I don't know that, you know, if you look at this, if you were to look at that and say, ah, you know, the, the energy to the loose sketch was way better, you know, so be it. Uh, there There's a certain aspects where I do want that sl uh, solid feeling line work at the very end of it. I want to put in my rendering and things like that. But uh, I do think that by going to uh, inks right off the rough sketch, that I can, you know, save a lot of time first and foremost, and then hopefully retain some of that, uh, you know, that creative vibe. Now, the other thing is this, is that you also have to guess a little bit more. But in that process, I, I think that you, uh, you know, you, you get something a little bit more, um, you know, off the cuff and a little bit more energetic because of that. So what I mean by that is when there's a very loose, rough sketch in place, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, exactly what you're going to put down with the inks right you have to guess there you have to just take creative liberty and you've got to make some executive decisions and, and finish the work um, and, and that means you know really settling on an idea at that given moment so by soft erasing and redrawing I find that I, I maybe try a couple different ideas on areas that I don't need to do that so uh, for instance if it's something like you know, even the rendering, it's like if I'm constantly redoing it over and over again, you know, am I wasting time? Am I overdeveloping something that people at first glance are going to look at and go, ah, oh, that's just shading. It's not a big deal. Or they're not looking at it and appreciating the full depth of what I was trying to put into it. So again, there's a lot of time saving in, that occurs by just doing this, by just taking the rough sketch and then finalizing it quicker uh, and, and and also you got to like let yourself be okay with the flaws you know so some of the things aren't going to come out perfect uh, excuse me for that part I was trying to use a hairbrush which really didn't work um, so like for instance you know if I'm looking at this the, the finger is weird right and I could have kept redrawing it I did redraw it a few times but I'm like ultimately nah he's he's this monstrous character anyways I'm just going to let it fly so Again, there, there's part of that as well, where you just have to kind of let things be less than perfect. Uh, and, and, you know, I talk about that a lot on the channel. Just remember that if you were to look at your work 10 years ago, you're going to go, wow, I totally would have drew that differently today. Uh, and, and that's kind of the, the thought process that I have when I'm trying to complete work. Like, yeah, can I make it better? Are there areas that are not entirely right? Sure, I'm going to fix the things that are the most uh, noticeable and wrong with the illustration. But at a certain, you know, certain area, I have to just let it be what it is. Less than perfect. There's no such thing as perfect anyways. Done is better than perfect. All that jazz. Uh, and get it done. And, and like that fail faster concept. I love that concept. Even in art and in life, it's like 
fail faster, allow yourself to make mistakes, learn from them, and go to the next one. Fail and fail faster. And it it's, takes a minute to get your head to wrap around that because you're like, fail, I don't want to fail. But it, it's, it really is part of life. It's part of learning. You know, It's part of growth. So allow yourself to do that and uh, be okay with it. And, and, and our, I think it's really important because none of this stuff is perfect. But it's all unique and all beautiful in a way. Well, maybe not this guy. He's far from beautiful. But you get what I'm saying. Like, it's your own creative expression. And that's awesome. So just, you know, do it and, and have a good time with it. Um, and a little bit about this, because I, I feel like people might ask, as far as, like, the brushes. I also developed a new brush for this. Uh, I think I just promoted it. So I'm not trying to promote it like that. But at the same time, I'll make sure it's linked in the description box below. Because... Some of you guys might ask, and they might want it, and I'm going to end up having to add the link anyway. So it's just a, uh, all I did is I created a brush with a more of a cut to it, and I used it entirely through this whole thing. And it gives, it, I feel like it gave me a little bit more of an angular kind of vibe to the work, uh, but you can be the judge of that. It's just another brush, and I, I made sure to give it a little bit more of a cut and an angle on the tip. Uh, it's for Procreate. It's a free set. Type zero during checkout if you want it. No biggie. I, I, I'll be making more as well. Uh, and then yeah, so like with this one, it's it felt like it was a uh, a better process for this type of character. So the characters that I think this type of process definitely works on, but I want to get it to work on everything, like drawn women, drawn you know pretty characters and and you know handsome characters like Superman or Batman, whoever you know clean characters, because I feel like I spend more time trying to clean up those characters to get that nicer uh, tight style. But my goal is to really make this work with every style. Uh, and again, you just have to get a certain comfort level there. But the, this style definitely works, or this way of producing the artwork definitely works better for characters like, you know, Violet or Venom, um, monstrous characters, you know, peop, uh, ones that are a little bit more loose or like a zombie or, you know, where you can just really uh, go crazy with the details uh, because they're kind of a eerie character anyways. But again, the ones that are cleaner and more concise, I feel like you have to take a little bit different approach. Uh, but for me, what ends up happening there is I just typically throw more of the lines. And by that, I mean just, you know, flinging the lines, doing more curves, more flowing lines. Like I do this for female characters where when I'm drawing the face, for instance, it's a sweeping line through the cheekbone to the chin. It's not a, a, a sculpted line or a kind of a you know back and forth. I just kind of throw the line and I connect the curves. So you've probably seen it in other videos, but again, I just want you to, to know that that's, that's really, it's really the same process, but here it was a lot more of just, uh, you know, guessing where I would transfer the lines from pencil to ink. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. I'd love to know what you think. More content is on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.